Hello everyone, welcome to the Geo Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos related to various topics that is geography, environment, research methodology on my channel the Geo Ecologist. So if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing our channel because we are going to cover each and every dimension of geography. Now in today's session on population geography, we are going to learn about two interesting concepts that is about social well-being and quality of life. But before we go ahead, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and do share the videos with others as well. So now let's understand the concepts of social well-being and quality of life. So first we'll talk about the social well-being. Now social well-being is an end state. Now it's very important to understand this statement that it is not the beginning but it's the result that we say. It's the end state in which the basic human needs are met and people are able to coexist. So remember the keywords that is being used to describe social well-being. It's the end state where human basic needs are met and it's also about coexistence of people peacefully in communities and also with opportunities of advancement. So in single line these three four keywords sum up that what we are talking about when we say social well-being right. So now let's understand further that what is this end state what is the characteristic of this end state. So first thing that is the equal access to and delivery of the basic needs and services that we say. So what are these basic needs and services? Examples, water, food, shelter, health services and so on, right? Then further if you observe the provision of primary and secondary education. This is the second dimension, second aspect of or second characteristic of the end state that is important. Then further if you observe the return or resettlement of those who were displaced by any violent conflict or riots or anything that is related to natural displacement as well right then comes the next dimension that is restoration of the social fabric and community life it means if by any chance there is a disturbance in terms of community understanding in terms of community life if the social fabric is being disturbed then restoring it is the end part right then this particular diagram will give you about the dimensionality of social well-being right so if you observe social well-being has several dimensions Right. So if you observe well-being dimension, democracy dimension, security dimension, environmental quality dimension, then health dimension, social connection, then you have work dimension, housing, workplace, then you have finance dimension, education. All these aspects are comprising the entire social well-being. So now you can understand the framework in simple ways that how social well-being can be understood. Now if you observe further, this is another set of flow diagram that you can use for your understanding and a systems approach which you can observe here. So there are several subsystems which overlap and create a social well-being status. So what are the components if you observe? Access to delivery and basic needs and services, access to delivery of education, the right of return or what we say resettlement of the refugees and internationally displaced people and social reconstruction. So these are the four dimensions which overlap and becomes social well-being. So in very simple way if you want to understand what is social well-being. Social well-being is the ability of people. First of all let's understand it's social well-being. So it is ability of people, communities to be what? To be free from want of basic needs, to coexist peacefully in communities with opportunities of advancement in a simple way. So three important aspect is to feel the freedom. Right, to be free of these want of basic needs. A person whose basic needs are fulfilled, they can think about peaceful coexistence. Right, And then further, they can also look into the opportunities of advancement in life. Now further, we have five social dimensions to be talked here in terms of social well-being. Right, So what are the social dimensions here? The acceptance, actualization, contribution, coherence and integration. Right, So you have AACCI. Okay? That's how in mnemonics you can understand AACCI that is acceptance, actualization, contribution, coherence and integration. Now these factors are very important in terms of the social dimensions of well-being in people's life, right? So now further, if you want to do some research, if you want to work out on social well-being aspect, what are the indicators? How will you compute? How will you understand? So let's understand the set of indicators for well-being. What are those indicators which tell us about the well-being of society? 
right so self esteem of people control over one's own life good health economic security access to community resources both physical and social then meaningful participation that's very important then meaningful participation in political as well as the community and family life then absence of the stressors remember in today's world stressors are very important social economic political all these stressors so you have to be free from the stressors then pleasant and secure physical environments then access to education capacity to engage in lifelong learning skills then recognition and respect with and within community and spiritual fulfillment all these dimensions if you observe all these indicators if you observe these are the indicators of a people's well-being in a society right so if you want to write a paper on well-being you need to take care of all these aspects right so these are the basic indicators of social well-being now further there is a question that we need to answer here so why is social well being a necessity why is it necessary in state what is its role what is its purpose so then the first thing is peace and peace cannot be achieved without social well being so peace cannot be sustained over long term without addressing the social well being of a population right that's why we say that peaceful coexistence is the prime building block of social well being so how will we do that without basic necessities such as food shelter large scale employability and also the stability of people away from instability right a normal life which we say where normal life is what sustainable livelihood traveling safely engaging in community activities or attending school and you can keep adding several aspects as we saw in several indicators now when all these things are running peacefully then we say that community is progressive right that's why it is a necessary end state so without helping people to return to their homes to return to their communities resettle them provide means for peaceful resolving disputes we cannot attain peace right so that's why social well being has this dimension of peace that we need to look into and with this is related this question that what are the necessary conditions to achieve social well being so we have already talked about it again the same four things that we observe the basic needs education displacement and reconstruction so this is the answer that if you really want to achieve social well being state the end state that we say which is necessary then for that these dimensions have to be worked out carefully now there is a question how to measure social well being how we can say that a particular state a particular country is in the state of social well being or not and how do we measure it so there have been numerous researches around the world so one of them is the australian center on quality of life acqol 2005 they developed australian unity well being indices this is one of its kind to study the well being of the society which recognizes particular things like there are two dimensions to well being that is one is personal and one is contextual right so according to two separate set of indicators they have developed the indices so first set of indicators if you observe this is called personal well being index pwi so how to calculate pwi we need data for that so we'll calculate data for these seven things then we can compute the indices so standard of living personal health life achievements personal relations personal safety community connection and future security these seven dimensions are part of the pwi that is personal well being index when we compute right and the second one is the national well being index nwi right for that we also have six indicators according to australian center on quality of life and those are economic situation environment social conditions government business national security so these are the aspects that we need to consider when we want to measure at personal level or at national level right then further there is another research related to amrac consulting which computes index of goodness now this kind of research is focused on well being and coming from ireland now what did they find the quality of life can be influenced by number of variables and what are the variables they talked about right here it is people's personalities state of health marital status local environment in terms of safety and cleanliness and financial circumstances religious beliefs satisfaction at work and demographic variables remember age gender educational qualifications so this is coming from index of goodness if you want to understand how good is it 
in terms of social well-being then these dimensions have to be looked into then further if you want to measure again in different ways second nature which is an educational organization made another important measurement and well functioning society has these particular indicators which they say so what are these are healthy and can meet their basic needs have fair and equitable access to earth resources then have a decent quality of life celebrate cultural diversity then are realizing their highest aspirations and contribute to the restoration and preservation of their ecosystems now this is according to the second nature educational organization so this is one way to measure then further if you observe canadian researchers they also developed something called index of well being now how did they develop this index using particular domains now there are seven domains to well being according to canadian researchers so living standards healthy population then community vitality quality of environment educational attainment of population and also amount of free time very interesting they have done here which can be devoted to social family and cultural pursuits right so this free time concept is there really important in canadian researchers think and level of civic engagement responsiveness to the governing bodies to citizens needs so these are certain important measurements ways right and then in summary what do we understand so social well being is a subjective analysis of quality of life social quality of life and it includes largely high standard of living education and skill development social security good living conditions or we said decent living conditions environmental protection opportunity to express their emotions sentiments cultural traits and social capital right and in the lectures to come we'll be talk about population as a social capital right other indicators like life expectancy positive sex ratio low dependency ratio high degree of employment and also ensuring social well being by working on at least three aspects that is democratic polity secular state conformance of fundamental rights and natural rights as well right so this is kind of a summary of social well being that we can understand now further the next associated thing is quality of life for social well being quality of life is very important indicator as we have been learning right now so quality of life also needs to be understood what is this qol quality of life what is the basic definition so generally quality of life is understood as a person's sense of well being how do we sense our own well being his satisfaction or dissatisfaction with life or happiness or unhappiness this is what we say is quality of life in simple way and it's also subjective as we know so who world health organization also gave a definition now who defines the condition of life resulting from combination of effects not singularity but combination of several effects what are these of a complete range of factors such as determining health happiness education social and intellectual attainment then freedom of action justice and freedom of expression so it's a combination it's an agglomeration we normally say in economic geography right so this is what who defines quality of life then further if you observe that why this study came into geography so because of the social welfare approach remember we talked about in evolution of geographical thought if you have not watched the lectures of evolution of geographical thought there is an entire playlist in which you can watch all these humanism behavioralism marxism and their influences so there was a welfare approach in geography and dm smith brought it to human geography in his work human geography of welfare approach where quality of life becomes really important right so first suggested this approach which later amalgamated with other approaches of geography dealing with this issues of inequality right so it's dm smith's work that paved the way of studying quality of life and quality of population at community levels at personal level at national level all these dimensions only because of the term welfare right so now further if you want to look indicators for quality of life there are four major indicators one is social indicator then health indicator economic indicator and environmental indicator if you are doing all four directions if you are doing well in all four dimensions it means the quality of life is really good that's the basic awareness so quality of life is the product product of what interplay among social health and economic environmental conditions so this can be one definition that quality of life is a product of these four dimensions now further let's understand the approach to the measurement of quality of life that comes from the concept of domains now what are these domains these domains are the contributors to the overall assessment of quality of life if you observe in this particular flow diagram quality of life is in the center 
and it has physical status and functional abilities as one domain, social interaction as one domain, religious and spiritual status as next domain, economic and vocational status and factors as next domain, and also psychological status and well-being as the fifth dimension or domain. Now, all these domains overlapping together will give us the assessment of the quality of life that we understand. Then further, there is another flow diagram where you can observe the same things, bodily integrity, feeling safe, feeling self-worth, having structure, sense of belongingness, social participation, meaningful daily activities and inner contentment. Very important that a person is content or not, right? So these are the ways to look into the quality of life. So if you observe physical well-being, material well-being, social well-being, economic well-being, perception of well-being, spiritual well-being, all these things contribute to a better quality of life in objective ways and subjective ways. But at this point, it's one thing that is important to remember that quality of life should not be confused with one thing that is standard of living, right? Why? Because which is primarily on income basis. So standard of living does not represent quality of life in direct ways, right? That's important to understand. And instead, standard indicators of quality of life include not only wealth and employment, but also built environment, physical and mental health, education, recreation, leisure time, social belongingness. So many times people have this tendency to use the words standard of living and also social well-being interchangeably. Remember, they are just one aspect. Wealth is just one aspect. It does not determine the social well-being and quality of life completely, right? That's important to understand. So, we observe carefully that social well-being, their indicators, their dimensions, and alongside the quality of life, they are intertwined. They're integrated together in the same human system. So now, when we have discussed in details the various aspects of social well-being and quality of life, in the sessions to come, we'll be talking more about population as social capital. So don't go anywhere, keep watching and learning, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and do share the videos with others as well.